What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Cafecito Time. Cafecito Time. Hi. No one gets that, guys. This Hi. is how every time I call Chingo just to fuck around. Like, that didn't Hi. sound good. I always say, <laughs> Hi. My then Tasha answers doesn't. the phone with people. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cafecito Time without Cafecito. Uh, we are still selling Cafecito, mm. though. If you want to buy you some of that red pill blend, hit up Grind Ops Coffee Co dot com and it's a limited edition hopefully we were able to do something like that every year and maybe next year we'll get some proceeds to something but and if uh, you're looking for gifts for her yeah her gifts her gifts yeah we're in her studio today not yeah. Studio. yeah uh go to her apparel tx.com guys we have a bunch of new stuff in and if you're local don't forget that her apparel is inside the hive pop-up collective in the rice village area come visit your girl i am there two days out of the week um so if you follow me on social media i will post when i'm there right so. across caddy corner from travis scott's store so you know travis wanted to be by the her apparel you know what i'm saying <laughs> over there by the hive Go check him out. For his sure. mom, his uh, mom and grandma do. Uh, shop, uh, I'm sorry, uh, mom and aunt. Travis shop Scott's there. mom Word. and mm -hmm. aunt. We uh, met the aunt who came and shopped and uh, doesn't use credit cards. Put out a bankroll. Mm. Just pulls out this wad. How much is it? And I was just like, oh, a wad. Kind of scarred. It's a lot of dinero. Hey, but anyway. Hey, so we just knocked out an episode. It was kind of a collab, right? Mm -hmm. We had Abraham Enriquez on. Uh, man, that was powerful. Mm -hmm. I just feel like, and without it, obviously it was a, it was kind of a political discussion, but, um, just the way he was able to put things into words in terms of like, Hey man, we got to keep God first. And the dad's got to step it up and masculinity is under attack and the youth and everybody right now, they're hungry for some structure and some truth and some order and not all this make the government your God type of stuff, make the government your religion. And uh, I, I feel really fired up and inspired. And I just want to um, shout out to all the dads out there. We would like to uh, coordinate some kind of meetup, something for the fellas. You know what I mean? All the dads and the husbands, maybe like some, you know, cigar, whiskey, maybe a craft brewery. Just meet up somewhere, watch a game, watch the fight and figure out a way to um, just mingle and hang out. Yeah, Mingle, yeah. network, build community, break bread, a little bit of fellowship and just get on the same page and be able to discuss you know how we can um better serve your family and community yeah and kind of spread that that idea because right now depending on depending on what you're into right like if you're a youngster and you just listen to rap music all day and whatever family ain't really a priority maybe you're single or maybe you're in college and you, some of this stuff might sound lame right it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh you're telling me that i'm not that i shouldn't listen to some of these rap lyrics mr hypocrite you're, you used to be mr rapper saying wild stuff but um chiches and nalgas chiches and nalgas the chiches nalgas chiches chiches nalgas and then they will repeat i can't wait till he has to explain that to our daughters <laughs> that's gonna be my favorite part you know when i was young i thought like a child <laughs> I don't know the actual Bible scripture, but um, but anyway, like, like make, when Penny says, mm -hmm. um, what you say? <laughs> oh, so this is off subject on subject. Penny had I, I said that it was very important for her to know Spanish. Does she know why? And she said yes because I want to take her to Mexico one day, right? So I said yes, and I said she said, well, Mickey doesn't know Spanish. She said I know because you know her mom didn't teach her, and then she stays quiet, right? She goes. But Mickey and I have the same dad, right? I said, yes. And she goes, okay, so, but daddy didn't teach her Spanish. I said, no, daddy did it. <laughs> yeah, she's four, bro. Four. She put the dots together. He's like, where's daddy? Why is Spanish? she? I don't have her all the time either. And she's so like smart. I was like, man, this little girl just be on it. She'd be on it. You say, she'd be on my ass. Yeah, yeah she's just like her mama, boy. <laughs> No se le pasa nada. Nada. <laughs> nada. But, um, but anyway. But yeah. Anyway, you so know. if people want to uh, hear that episode, where can they go? Right? They can go to either feed. Her Lounge Podcast or Red, Red Pill Tamales. Red Pill Tamales. And the reason we did the collab was because I didn't want to have them on. Like, can you do 30 minutes with Chingo and then 30 minutes with me? It was actually way better that you guys collabed Yeah, because one. I felt like we were able to get more out of it versus having to limit ourselves with yeah. him. Because he, I felt he had so much knowledge and information. Um <clears throat> 
Um, I, I, although I know we always say Cafecito Time is not a it's not a political podcast. It's a podcast just about you know life and <laughs> it's a podcast to and, get away from politics. <laughs> yeah, um, and all that. Um, I do want to say that um, everything that he spoke about is very true. And for someone who is very young, because he's I think he's only like twenty. He said he graduated college in like twenty eighteen. Yeah, I'm like. 20. He's like his early 20s. He's like 26, maybe 24. I think it's 24, 25. 24, 25. And to. to what well, well, they raised him right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. He's fresh out of college and you putting together all this stuff. I mean, they did a briefing at the White House. He's been. I'm like, CPAC. he don't smoke no weed. <laughs> <laughs> or he smokes ah! a ton of it. He just like went to another level. He ain't got no chocolates or shrooms in it. Hey, hey, hey. He ain't. <clears throat> uh, but I think a lot of it is um, when you have um, structure as a kid and you're not trying to be rebellious, you know? <laughs> you're not living uh, in Harris County? You're not. Well, you know, I don't even think that has to do with it. No, nah, you got to just keep God first. Yeah, you just, you're rebellious, you know? Like, I'm the perfect example of that, you know? Like... I didn't want to be religious like my parents. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think it was cool. It didn't look cool either. It's like who, you know, who wants to do that? Um, and now I'm 43. What, what you hear in my house on Sunday morning? I love it. I love it. <laughs> With Penny singing right next to him. Bro. I love that my do- my one-year-old even. Even oh, the one-year-old is like. It's jamming it, out. It, it, I put on listener kids and it'll be like, I got the joy, 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 joy. Down She's like. <laughs> Meanwhile, you put Bad Bunny, she's also going to dance that, that too. That yes. too. Um, but let me tell you something. Um, Penny told us on the way home from church this Sunday, mm. she said, in that, literally, I kind of. What did what, she say? I almost wanted to shed a little tear, bro. She said, I got a little tears in my eyes, mom. I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you know, like a little bit of tears right here. And I said, well, why? She goes, so I was just happy to be at church. I miss church. I miss church. And then when she prays, like I'm she, to cry right now, my soul. Like when she, no, it's because like, no. bro, because because she's four. Bro, look yeah. at the world that we're raising them in. Yeah, 2022 United States of America, where mm-hmm. half the country believes in 89 genders. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I, I, I felt it too. I'm like, yo, we're we're actually doing a pretty good yeah. job. So that's why I said, um. So listen, I might just have a fans only here pretty soon because my daughter got to continue going to this. Uh, <laughs> second Baptist ain't second, cheap. Second, second Baptist, Baptist school. Second Baptist not cheap. And that's where we want her to go next year. And I'm just like, how am I going to make that happen? So you, I told uh, Chingo, I said, I'm going to submit the application. I might have to show my feet. <laughs> only fan. There's <laughs> toe now. Oh, She's like, you know, I got these little feet. <laughs> people like little feet. Remember little feet got to bring your money. Feet fat? Well, isn't that yeah. the reason like the Chinese, I think, had those little shoes where feet were like deformed? Because little oh, feet yes. are supposed to be like very attractive. Mm. I don't know. Deformed little bitty feet. Do you feet. think my feet are Cuban? You got little bitty feet. Yeah, <laughs> your feet little bitty. <laughs> Is that what, that's what she them asked? That's them, what she asked, but okay. Them little feet need to start bringing in some money. <laughs> Because this private school, because if you send your kids to public school in Harris County, you playing Russian roulette. You don't know what you're going to end up with. After 12 years of indoctrination, you don't know what kind of little social justice warrior you can end up with, little Marxist. Hey, before we get to the topics that, I, that we talked about on the last podcast with uh, Abraham, I want you guys to shout out the fans of Addison that told you how much they love Cavacito time. Oh, yeah. They did. Every city. A lot we, of people. We will go back to Addison next year. Some of these cities, we will not. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. But the feedback has been great. I mean, Marisol and I started going live every day during the pandemic because the left uh, shut down businesses. <laughs> <laughs> Squeeze it in there. You know, because, you know, the real Anthony Fauci, what y'all don't know, is um, they shut down businesses, man. They shut down churches. Uh, Gavin Newsom in California, he didn't want nobody singing up in church. Meanwhile, you were, able, you were able to go protest all in the Chaz and the Chop in Seattle and Portland and everywhere else, you know. And where are they? What are they doing right now? Nothing. Who? A whole lot of nothing. Who? Chaz Portland, and Chop in Portland. All, all the, uh, oh, what are Portland, they? bro. I'm talking talk about godless. Have you, did, did you see the picture? Uh, I think I posted this meme here. You want to see this. Um, <clears throat> you can almost smell the photo. I put it to you like that. <laughs> These are like... You see, Five young ladies, five young ladies from Portland, Oregon. And when you see the photo, you can just hear them saying like, fuck fascists. They got the fuck fascist uh, picture pose going on. That's intense. Have you seen the one where they're crushing up like all the different needles and stuff and they're recycling them in in the tubs? It's just like hundreds and hundreds of pounds of like Who's, you know, drug Why needles. are they recycling them? Well, they're cleaning them and recycling the plastic and then just like processing them so they're not on the floors, I guess, on the Ooh, grounds that's everywhere. That's good. Are they getting they're like, like shoveling, stuff? shoveling them up. But they're like sanitizing clean. 
uh, you know, Mexico ran a campaign, an anti-drug campaign, showing scenes of I think it's called Kensington Ave in a Philadelphia, Philadelphia with all the druggies yep. and stuff. And basically, Mexico saying like, "Hey, y'all, I know we the ones that deal all the dope. I know we the ones with all the cartels, but don't be a druggie like those Americans." Yeah. Ooh. Basically, it's a pretty intense ad. Oh, I got to see that. Yeah, is they don't. They don't want Mexico. Is it espanol, in espanol? Yeah, they don't want Mexico to have a drug problem. And we all know how I feel about Spanish. It is a lot worse whenever it's something said described in Spanish. You, yeah. It's described in Spanish. I mean, let's just say let's let's just. El comercial de las drogas. Is that what you say? Yeah, or anything. No, like when you get mad at your kid, how, you, doesn't it just sound better in Spanish? So how about this? Do the commercial in Spanish. Like, how would you if you were Mexico? And you were trying to do this marketing campaign to like say, hey, don't be like those druggy Americans. Yeah, my soul's talking to her fellow Mexican citizens okay. to not be like the Americans. ¿Cómo lo haces? Pues no van a ser como estos americanitos que andan de drogaditos ahí en la calle. México. O sea, no. México conste. Nosotros somos, somos <laughs> los que mandamos la droga. Pero aquí no Nosotros seas, maquilamos uh, y distribu distribuimos uh, la droga. Pero aquí no. No se fuma. Dejen eso para los americanitos que hoy no sirven para nada. Well, like that's, <laughs> that's exactly how they think. I can't uh, find American. a picture, but oh, just, just imagine the tattoos. And... <laughs> imagine the smell. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, yeah, but um, I just think I think as parents, you should just be concerned. And I know there's people who are like, okay, yeah, but we're not all <clears throat> conservative, right? Because that's what everybody wants to throw in your face. But I think Abraham today did a very good job of explaining that it's not about whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or a, you know, liberal and a um, conservative or whatever you want to. It's just about principles, yeah, your, values. And your values. And so if you have values and morals and, you know, then a lot of what's happening is probably not something you agree with. And it doesn't take a rocket science to know that there's that one party that is pushing that. And unfortunately, I know that when we go to the voting polls, it's it's kind of like you only have two options, right? But which one of those two options is what aligned with your beliefs and values? I'm going to go to Cavenders. I'm going to have my baby dress me up like Yellowstone because I got to start <laughs> promoting his masculinity. Um, one of the clips from Abraham Enriquez, I know it's, it's going to be a big clip. It's going to get some eyeballs. That it really spoke to me when he said they're attacking masculinity for a reason. He's like, you're, they don't, they don't want you. They, they're like, they don't. He said they don't like your your abuelito and your dad and your tío, like that machismo, that like Mexican machismo, the masculinity, which was, hey, if we got to go to war, we going to war. You know, we got to defend our family, we defending our family, like that type of thing. And um, we got to figure out a way to just wake people up to be like. Hey, do you f do you believe in like being able to defend yourself and defend your family? Like, is that what you're about? <clears throat> then that might be one of your values, and that might help inform where you lie on the political spectrum. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of people are really anti-gun. Like, mm -hmm. it probably stems from ignorance or fear, because uh, they believe that like guns automatic. They get up, and start walking at night, start shooting innocent people, or something. I found that that clip. You want to watch it, so yeah. The uh, commercial here, I believe it's. Uh... Oh. Oh, that's the one from Mexico. Oh, you need to see it. Sorry, bro. No, you're good. Yeah. That's fine. Jesus. Oh, bro, that's oh, that. That's how short it is. Ah, oh, that's it. Nope, there it is. There. Wait, wait, wait. El fentanilo te engancha desde la primera vez. Esclaviza tu mente y tu cuerpo. No destruyas tu vida. El fentanilo mata. No te arriesgues. No vale la pena. Si necesitas ayuda, llama a la línea de la vida. 800-911-2000. And they reference fentanyl in particular. Fentanil. Fentanil, yeah. Viene de China. Nosotros lo distribuimos. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, man. It, it, it's really, uh, it's really attack, an attack on America to... <clears throat> try to kill a lot of people with it this is shit. so bad i mean you see a lot of people around here on fentanyl uh, and that's what i was about to say yeah. i saw one person literally rob standing up and just like this if you're not watching sorry yeah, leaning just leaning and just having his eyes closed and the mouth open just going back and forth 
it, how long till rappers start promoting that no oh. and i popped the no and i snort the no film the no sell the no i would hope that they have better common sense than that yeah. like because that's I mean, pretty they bad prom- they promoting abortions and everything else you know shooting each other bro the abortion video with that girl was over the top for me the ab- oh yeah, yeah, yeah that was mm-hmm. over the f and i took the plan b you know i I got murder on my mind. That ain't a baby. That's a fetus. That's crazy, dude. And it went viral, too. It well, went yeah. viral. Probably and a lot I of hate that I, And I hate that I sharing, clicked it right. and gave it more of energy. Because it's in your algorithm now? Yeah. And I just hated that I did that. But um, anyway, um, just going back to that, I just think that... Um, just as an individual, I'm not talking about any party that you want to claim, any set you claim. First of all, and you claim. Um, you know. <laughs> who who is that? Fuck you, bitch. Who's that reference? Who's uh, that reference? Tupac. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um. <laughs> Rob's gonna give me a heart attack. Come on, man. I just think that you just need to find what you align with. And then that that's who you yeah, figure out how many genders you believe in. Yeah. Well, yeah, I talked a lot about parents, right? So like a lot of the audience is older, like as far not not like y'all are old, but a lot of the audience is a little bit older. Your so. mom goes to college. <laughs> what would you tell parents right now? They're like, maybe ha- I know a lot of people have little ones. Like, how do you prepare yourself for when they become Penny's age where she's asking all these questions? She's super smart. Like, how do you guide that? You want to go first? Um, <clears throat> well, it was always very important for me to have God in her life. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't know if I ever said it on Cafecito Time, but I remember, I know that Chingle was not raised the way I was. So for me, when I came to him, knowing that I wanted my daughter to go to church, I didn't know how to approach him because I was like, I already knew. You thought that, I was still godless. Because Well, I knew how he felt a certain kind of way about I guess being a Catholic, being raised Catholic. So I was like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to say to <laughs> him. Barely. <laughs> they took me a handful of times and they forced me into CCD. But class. technically, that would be your religion because I that's guess, what you yeah. were raised in. Um, so I didn't know how I was going to like tell him. So I literally just said to him, it is very important for my child to know who God is and you don't have to come to church with us. I don't want you to ever feel forced, you know, Um, because if there's any, if there's one thing that any woman can do is pray for her husband. If you're somebody that's going to church and you would love for your husband to come join you, it's just a matter of uh, prayer and asking God to open your husband's eyes and his heart so that he can receive whatever it is that you're praying about, you know, so that he can come to God and, you know, come with you. So for me, it was very important for Penny to go to church. I love Sunday school. I've said this a million times. I didn't like church as much as I got older because obviously, fuck your bitch and the set, all that was more, a lot yeah, more the, fun The club was calling. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the streets um, were yelling. The demons. You know, that was a little bit more appealing to me than going to church. Because we find comfort in our sin. You know, <laughs> look at him. He's, he's yeah. going to take that well, and run. Yeah, that was good. That was a good clip. On, that was a good clip. We done, we, clip. We, we threw sugarcoating stuff for y'all. Ain't, so, no more, ain't no more sugarcoating. So it was important for me. And um, and obviously, um, when I came to him, he was super open about it, which I, and, I, and I also because I said, and I'm going to a Baptist church. So I don't know how you're, how you feel about that. I said, I'm not going to Catholic church what either. You're like, you just said, okay, I'm down. You're like, I'm down to go to church. And I said, really? Cause I was not expecting that to be honest with you. I was expecting for him to say, well, okay, well y'all can go. And I was going to be like, okay, I was already ready for that. Does that make sense? I had already mentally prepared myself for the Damn. no. Counted you out. Well, dog. She, she thought government was my God, bro. No, well, I'm just being honest. But when you well, don't... it was for a while. She thought I believe in <laughs> scientism and all that. No, bitch. it had nothing to do with that, babe. It's just, okay. It's just like some people are jaded about, re- about religion, you know, and and I was never jaded about religion. I just didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just didn't attend. I just didn't attend anymore, you know. Um, but when I when when Penny was born, I realized why it was important for my parents. So it was a calling from having a, a new totally. kid, a new child. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think so. And maybe the desire of wanting to go back to church. I don't know. Maybe a combination of two. Jingle for I you. Think about it. You think having babies. Kind of well, you well, um, it wasn't so much like, oh no, I have babies. Uh, all of a sudden, my internal religious clock <laughs> kicking in. No, but 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 <laughs> at, at, as I mature and as I've already tried things <clears throat> my way, me. yeah, right. I've already 
experimented with all the different paths of like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll be out. The homies are caught. We're in the studio. We're doing it. We rapping about that. Like with no consideration of like, who's going to hear that lyric and how may that live forever right. and echo and reverberate and get misinterpreted and you you promoting some shit, right? But I think um, it stems more from a desire of like, obviously the wisdom and the maturity was a little bit more there. I wasn't like 26 anymore. <laughs> But yeah. um, but just the desire of like, yo, I want to be a good father. I want to be a good husband. Like, I want a good family, a good household. I want my daughters to be like, we had an excellent dad. Like the way Mighty Soul always, the way they always talk about their dad, rest yeah. in peace. Yeah, you know, it's like my dad was awesome. He was, you know what I mean? Like Mighty Soul always like he was there. Anything we needed, you know, he was he put us first. We knew where he was, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> we knew where he, he was. was. He was coming back. We knew. But everything. at the same time, my sister, uh, I'm sure she. Something she realized, uh, she went to a Bible study this past weekend. What? And it's funny. Yeah. it's And she's like, I, I, and and I think that I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But I think when you're raised religious, like the way we were, one way or the other, that's why I always, I always, I don't know the, the scripture in, in English, but so I'm not going to say it. I only know it in Spanish. And it's like. You know, raise them up. A ver, dime español. Dime español. Instruye el niño en su carrera y aun cuando fuere viejo, no se apartará de ella. Ahí está. Mm, okay. You know, so you on, Proverbios 22, 6. And that's what I was, because you asked an excellent question, which was like, how do you arm, you know, how, what do you say to other parents who have little ones might have to navigate this? Mm. And um, it, I guess the way I would say it is like, when you do have that priority and that desire to like, I want a good family. I want to be a good husband. I want my wife to be happy. Like, you know what I mean? Like cherish and cheer. And, and I, I, I had the hunger for some structure and some order and, and things like that. And I had already tried everything. Same, like Lucky. I mean, he inspires me so much because, you know, at, at a similar time, he grew up as well. Yeah. We, were, we were both young, dumb punks, you know, and now we like some little grown ass little men and shit. But I feel like for all the dads out there, that have similar desires, right? Is how do you arm your kids with the tools so that they don't go astray and just end up being mess ups and having all kind of just going down the wrong path and having all kind of issues. And, and, and uh, our four year old Penny, she, when she prays to like bless the food and she'll be like, and thank you God for yeah. make, washing our sin and making our hearts clean and for loving us. And, and, Bro, and I'm just like, <laughs> Did she just say? Wash? Well, the thing is, is that they pray at church. I mean, at school. Okay, so before they eat, <clears throat> they have. It's and then we the, pray at it's, home. It's the same one every time. But then they're asked to lead in prayer at four. So right before their Bible study or their their Bible, yeah, their Bible study uh, part of school, um, they're asked to. Everyone's taught. They're taught how to, you know. I guess pray and then it's their turn to start leading in prayer and so when she prays it's really good um <clears throat> it's so funny my sister jokingly said um <laughs> can you pray so that i can find a husband right that's what she said yes i can thea and she said all right god help my my thea find a a good husband and thank you god because she's really nice. And she just starts praying about like how good of a person she is. So she needs to find her. I was like. I bet that prayer is going to work too. I told Cynthia. She goes, dog, your kids are way too much for me. <laughs> she's like, she's got way too much. Like, I, that's why I can't wait to see how uh, Sunny's going to be. Because I, I get to see Penny's personality already. I think Sunny's going to be my rebel though. We don't know. And to, to, all, the sing, <laughs> yeah. to all the single ladies. <clears throat> <clears throat> definitely man i i, I think me. that um to all the single women out there now is a perfect time to get closer to god because you know for those that would like to find a man i feel like it's important to have your values in order right to know what you really about so you don't compromise you don't settle and keep god first so that like for example we had this convo about about the uh, dating apps where um oh coffee meets bagel yeah or whatever wh whatever they are mm -hmm. to where like i guess you go on the girl's profile and you see that they're like little woke mm -hmm. anti-american like libs or whatever yeah little marxist progressives <laughs> and can you imagine like 
to all the conservative men who, <clears throat> who might be like trying to like, man, all I want to do is uphold you. Like, I just want a woman I can just take care of and provide for. You know what I mean? Like almost like the ideal perfect thing that anyone like, I don't want to be out there drinking and staying out late and chasing women. I'm not about that. I want to have a family. Right. Imagine. So if, if they're uh, for listeners, are there a lot of single guys that go to a church like where you guys attend? Totally. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just curious. But, but they have Bible study for singles. Oh, okay. they have Bible study for married couples, for the men, for the women. You just have to find the one that works for you. You know, um, oh, what I was trying to say about my sister was she went to a Bible study going back to that. And um, see, I brought it back. You did. Remember. <laughs> Professionals. Totally. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, so she we she did grow up super sheltered. You know, we we all did it. My mom, my dad, my and my my mom, we all three of us. She's the baby, you know, don't no struggle like she can't know what it's like to not like bulldozing be to, obstacles out of her yeah way. like all the time fixing it even when she was probably married i still would like what do you need help with like you know what i'm saying like i was still like that with her because i know she was going to school she was trying to finish and so i don't know um my point to that is she said she went to a bible study and she's like wow there's a lot of people that are broken she's like and i never realized that being sheltered was actually a good thing. She's like, I'm so glad that I never had to go through parents mistreating their kids the way some of these adults mm -hmm. are trying to get over this trauma, childhood trauma, you know, of being mistreated by parents, uh, being mistreated by spouses. And she's like, I never realized, she's like, for the first time ever, she's like, I used to always get so mad at y'all because y'all did so much sheltering and, you know, and... I'm so glad I was. She's like, because I didn't realize how many broken and hurt people are out there. I, I don't think it's so mm -hmm. much that she was sheltered. I think y'all grew up in a good, loving home with like some, some like, for example, <clears throat> everything you, you said about like, like, wow, <clears throat> there's some people out there that are broken. There's some people out there trying to figure out their trauma and pick up the pieces and, and navigate and figure out direction in life. And they're still dealing with stuff from their upbringing. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, in their upbringing, their parents weren't obeying what's in the Bible mm -hmm. because you wouldn't be treating your kids like that. It's almost like, have you ever heard the acronym uh, Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Bible? Mm -mm. So it's almost like if if those people that are broken that, that are, I guess, going to the... Um, Bible the study. Bible study, right? And your sister noticed, like, man, they got a lot of issues and mm -hmm. trauma and shit. Well, that's what happens when... You you got parents and the family that aren't following a certain instruction. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes you just get a bad roll of the dice too. With yeah, your you just get stuck your parents. Yeah, yeah that's that's a unfortunate, that's an unfortunate one. Too parents as well. who don't yeah. don't have yeah. It's like what? Who? How do y'all? How do y'all operate? Yeah, oh, where's the moral compass? Yeah, it's like oh, you're on drugs and you're not around. You're chasing women. Why is that? Oh, I don't. So what? Where in the Bible does it say that's you supposed to do? Oh yeah, no, I don't. I don't. So since we only have a couple of minutes uh, on today on this week's episode, like what kind of community building do you think people should strive to do? Like you were talking about doing like a get together with like you know agents of, of the podcast listeners, or we call them and. You've talked about that too much. So with like her lounge, have like a her mixer, which do virtual ones. But what should other people who are maybe listening right now in a rural area who don't really have a whole bunch of people around them, like how do they find and build community? I'm gonna do a, a Yellowstone watch party, <laughs> and then we'll have a Zoom link. Anybody from out of town want to come in? Um, I like that. You want to answer? I mean, I I think I'm already trying to work towards that with my uh, Patreon account. Um, yeah, and your ladies are very like my my, close. my her soldiers. Her soldiers. soldiers. Uh, he was making fun of me because I bought these shoes this weekend. Oh, they had like red camo. <laughs> they have red camo. <laughs> they <laughs> they reminded me of some No Limit New Orleans. He goes, "What shit. is that? Soldieries? What's that? Soldieries? <laughs> you got the jabos with it?" He said, "What is that? Your her soldiers tennis shoes?" I was Dude, like, "Damn right." You gotta wear those next <laughs> week. I, I thought Mighty Soul was gonna bust out a matching bandana. <laughs> Wear like BG, das, das, das. <laughs> I started laughing. I was like, okay, I didn't ever see okay. it like that. With a camo funny. fanny. Where, where's the white tall tee? <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, I, I've said this a billion times and it's probably like a repetitive type thing that you guys are going to hear because I hear I say it on my podcast. But I think if um, everyone came together, put your shit aside and really focused on the things that matter in life, which is probably community, you know what I'm saying? Your children, family, all those things. Um, 
our government would be really scared. I've said that a million times. And, Family uh, unit, baby. Um, they'd be very scared. They wouldn't Community. know what to do. They'd be like, well, what the fuck? Because technically they work for you. Yeah. But we treat them as though they work for us. It sounds cliche, but we the people, which is why I love this this watch band, yes. we the people. It really is we the people. It is really we the people. That's why it says it takes a village, you <laughs> yeah. know, because it does take a village to be able to make things better, you know, and uh, uh, the media did such a great job of, you know, of making make America great again, such a bad thing. Yeah. But if you think we about it. We can't go back. You know, it's uh, exactly. what Go back to what? A we, good economy? We always talk about Open how businesses. we're just so our... Um, that she's so broken, right? That there's so many... She's got so many flaws, meaning America, mm. right? She's got so many flaws, right? A checkered past. Right? And so if that's the case, then why not want to make America great again if we have have so many flaws? It's because still the land of opportunity. Because yeah. we're... Exactly. If it wasn't the case, people still wouldn't be trying to come in loads up in here. You know, if it was such a shitty country. Risking life and limb. Exactly. And so um, I really think that if you just kind of... Pay attention to your surroundings. Uh, what are you What are you grateful for? You know what What makes um, getting up every morning the fact that you have a job and you're not on fentanyl on the streets? You know what I'm saying? Or made bad decisions? The fact that you wake up every morning, uh, you know, you're able to give thanks for another day. You know, you see your kids. You're able to put food on the table. It's the very minimal things that sometimes we take for granted that we're like, oh, we're poor. No, you're actually rich because you're able to pay bills. Your lights are not turned off. You, got health. you know, you got health. Um, you're able to pro give food or, you know, provide food uh, for your family. So there's a lot of things that I think sometimes we take for granted, um, which are very simple and people don't think about. And um, if we just took those things and grew with it and, and invited it as though it's not a bad thing to be a family. It's not a bad thing for women to submit to their husbands. And before I get the hell of attacks on this video, learn what submit to your husband really means. It does not mean bow down to him and kiss his fucking feet. You know what it I'm means saying? Cheer him. It on. just exactly. You're just his cheerleader as he is your supporter. It's a team effort. And if you can't, be a team in a marriage you're more than likely to fail some of you ladies are so so damn stubborn and hard-headed and you don't want to submit and you don't want uh, and that's why you over there i don't need no man you over there uh, <laughs> at night come on now all right Jing, how are you gonna send him out for the week well i want to say this uh shout out to michael berry he just had a birthday out there in montgomery county willis texas and Obviously, when you go out there, they got billboards that say, hey, bitch, this ain't Harris, my it G. It does say that. Have you seen that oh, billboard? No. Yeah. Uh, FYI. Ready? You ready to hear this billboard? Yeah. This is Montgomery County. We prosecute crime. Tread lightly. And it's a big ass billboard. Don't think it's like, like an actual billboard. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's, like, it's huge. I just want to let y'all know. Off yeah, the freeway. Yeah, yeah. You in a different county now. <laughs> yeah. This ain't no Lena Hidalgo. Over different here. lines. Different lines. Totally. And, and I want to add to that. So I was at Michael Berry's event. Montgomery County, Willis, Texas. So you're going to have a high concentration of like-minded individuals. So when you're in the mindset of like, mm -hmm. hey, what kind of propane, propane heaters and who you get, who your firewood plug and who got the ammo, where, where we hunting at, who got meat, who got this, who got that. You're in a high concentration of these like-minded individuals, right? And it's like everybody that's up on game. Now, what we're trying to do with our podcast and everything else we do, we're doing, it's like, calling out all like-minded individuals like challenge like i mean we already do the mamado challenge on mm -hmm. um yeah, the on, the, on the discord and the patreon but i also invite all those who are not like-minded to be open-minded yeah to to what's really happening and and really that's the problem is i think so many people allow it sound like you're trying to start a militia <laughs> over there <laughs> no I think you just try so hard to um, not yeah. ruffle the feathers. Yeah, or not like, offend. well, I don't want to be. I'm guilty of that, guys. I don't want to be number rude. one. Every time on my podcast, when I would talk about something, I'd always say, but, you know, I get it. That says, just, and I just had to come to terms. It was one day at church. I don't know what it was about. And I just, I think I came on the podcast that next Monday. Mm -hmm. I said, I was so ready for this podcast because I just wanted to say I will no longer apologize for anything that I say because that's how I feel. Yeah. And that's my, my, my beliefs and my values and my morals. So just like 
you, the opposite person doesn't, doesn't feel like they have to apologize or, you know, uh, bend down to the mob, you know what I'm saying? But yet I'm, I'm having to be quiet or tiptoe or, you know, I mean, you don't as much, you know? Yeah, but, but no, but the left wants to censor and, and everything else. So. Yeah. And so I just kind of had to come to the conclusion that if, if you cannot have a, a, a civil conversation with someone, regardless of you not agreeing, then how will we ever get better as a community? Absolutely. And that's it. And that's that. Hey, that's facts. Cafecito time. See you next week. <laughs> Honor your wife. <laughs> Our Red Pill Tamales and Her Lounge podcast every week, multiple episodes per week. And follow us on YouTube. You can see a lot more shorts and clips from all the podcasts. And go follow me on Instagram. They're hating on me. You're not creating like, enough content? I'm not creating enough content, so they're taking away, or y'all are unfollowing me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, our social media expert, uh, comedian Juan Perez, he's like, yeah, she doesn't post enough times. <laughs> and I was like, she has multiple pages. He's like, yeah, I think she has about four. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep up with the ones that... Uh, yeah, my wife likes to take on a lot. Guys, see the time is on the Chingle Bling YouTube channel. Share it, watch it, subscribe. Make sure you like it and leave a comment. Bow, bow, bow. Shout, shout out to the families and the couples. Fellas, man up. Sus.